Welcome to Rising Tide Startups, where today's most exciting startup founders share their stories and strategies. They also deliver tangible lessons learned along the way that you can apply to your own startup. Each episode is a true masterclass. Make sure you take notes. Take it away, Kevin. Recording started. This is Kevin Pruitt with an encore presentation of Rising Tide Startups with a good online friend, Jamie J. Jamie, it has been since February of 2019 since you've been on Rising Tide. It is high time. We have an encore presentation. So my friend, welcome back. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's the time of this recording. It's what, August? Uh, it is. You've just taken off. That's awesome. Well, I tell you what, you were you were one of those early podcast gurus that I, I relied on. I remember we actually had a call offline and I, I picked your brain for a while and you were so so kind and generous with your time and, and uh, really helped me lay a foundation. But Man, this show's about you. Tell us, what, remind our audience who Jamie J is and what you do. Well, I am a starter geek of sorts, I guess you could say. Um, I, I love uh, starting stuff and, and geeking out on creating systems and processes and, and all that kind of stuff to scale. And um, I actually love supporting and guiding other entrepreneurs and doing the same. Uh, call me up set up a time and ask me questions. It's uh, I love sharing the experience of what I've learned. Um, it's just, it's just a lot of fun. Um, and, 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 and I, I, I honestly mean that. And, and I'm so thankful that you took me up on, on that. Cause I just love sharing and, and where maybe I stepped in a couple potholes or <laughs> <laughs> fell on my face in the mud. Maybe I could, um, you know, maybe guide someone around those uh, so that they don't make the same mistakes that, that we did here. So yeah, I just love I just love that. Um, I love the business that we're in. Um, I, since since we've talked last, I've become an, a published author. So my new book. That's uh, your half. Yeah, August. Yeah, actually, in in nine days, it's one year since we since we published. So it, it's been a fun, fun, exciting year. Um, uh, dealing with that, and the business has just been steadily right there, and we've just uh, kind of got into category design uh the one and only christopher lockhead the godfather of category design really really uh supported us and pushed us in a in a, a direction to kind of differentiate ourselves so proud to say we're the world's first dedicated distant assistant company uh that's bottleneck distant assistance we just uh love it most people uh, are familiar with virtual assistants and they wonder what the heck is distant assistance and we had to do something a little bit different to um, kind of break the mold and kind of come up with a different storyline um, that really highlighted uh, the services that we offer right. to support growing agency owners and business leaders. Well, let's let's drill down on that a little bit. So, you know, everyone's heard of virtual assistants, they, you know, Think first thing that comes to mind, you know, the Philippines. You know, you've got workers in the Philippines. There's there's such an affinity with with how, you know, Filipino workers um, work, how they learn English. You know, just it's it's a great transition, you know, culturally to the American market. But tell us what's the differentiation and how how have you kind of created the, this new cat or how are, are you creating this new category? Yeah, so it's. Um... This this month, it's the category is two years old. Um, we we launched in twenty twenty August twenty twenty. Actually, I think it was September. So, but but we were really moving on it in August, and uh, we we were trying to figure out a way because so many of these virtual assistant companies were popping up when COVID came around because people started figuring out that well, I could delegate a lot of this work remotely um and we came up with a 10 percent rule i think every organization should have at least 10 percent of their workforce a minimum remote right um, and we've identified three key areas where the collaborate collaborative element um doesn't necessarily be need to be in office in order for them to not only thrive in this type of environment but be very productive and wow. um, an, an asset to, to the team, we found uh, there's four roles. There's a bookkeeper, there's a personal assistant, there's a project coordinator, and then there's customer service representatives. These are all roles that 
can really, really, really help, or I say, I hate saying the word help, support um, agency owners and business leaders in growing their business um, by reducing overhead and increasing productivity. And we've studied this. I, I can't tell you how much we've studied this to try and differentiate those two. And one of the biggest things that we've found in talking to businesses that have been around for three to seven years and they, they kind of got stuck mm -hmm. trying to figure out they're getting busy, but there's clients are starting to kind of maybe fall through the cracks or they're, they're recognizing friction points and they're seeing, seeing things that are challenges. And my book says, quit repeating yourself. Um, it's almost the definition of insanity, trying to do the same things over and over again. And Expect hope for a, a different goal, outcome, yeah. Right? And there's one common denominator we found with, I would say, the majority of these businesses, and that is an effective system within mm. a business, yeah. including processes and workflows. And so we've come up with a process improvement program. So all of our assistants now go through the Bottleneck Academy um, where they learn how to uh, delegate and also how to build workflows and processes hmm. within an organization. Yeah. And a lot of people say they have systems, but there's two layers to it. There's a how to do something, but there's also the decision-making tree of that. Mm, and right. That is the what if. So what if this happens? Do that. What if it doesn't happen? Do that. How long should I wait to call back if we don't get a call back? You know, little things like that that are oftentimes overlooked. And we keep those as leaders in our head so much that it destroys the expectations because you know you can hire somebody that knows something and knows all about this one thing. But what if that's not the way you want it to work? Right. Right. So so we all of our assistants get trained in workflow management. And every single client that we work with, we have a 60-day onboarding process. The first six, 30 days is phase one. That's training. You spend an hour a day with them, train them on all the processes and all the tasks you want delegated. And then they work the rest of the day, but they, they get the training that day on kind of what to do. The second phase, which is the next 30 days, is a documentation period. Our assistants are trained to use that, utilize that same time that they use for training in the first phase to build out a workflow manual. At the end of the 60 days, your assistant has delegated that to my design team. We've mm -hmm. designed a workflow manual in your brand with all, including a table of contents, all of the tasks that have delegated to them in a step-by-step -step format. And this is- What a value things. add. Oh, it's amazing. Wow. And what's really cool about this, and I get so excited about this, kind of geek out on this stuff, but in, in my case, at the time we talked, my personal assistant was Raina. I may have told you about her. She was absolutely amazing. She was promoted to a project manager. Now she's our director of operations. Mm. It took me about three months to train her, kind mm -hmm. of get up to speak. I had to learn a lot. I didn't know what I didn't know back then. Now I have a new personal assistant. It took her two weeks, two weeks because everything was documented. Yeah. And so yeah. That's the reason why it's so important to document these things. And then the second part of it is, I said there was two parts. The second part is now you have the confidence to delegate even more responsibility because you know what you've delegated initially. Yep. It's, as it's, it's done. And because now you have the foundation set, you can easily add on to that and update. That, that is absolutely amazing. I, and one thing you were talking about, I don't want to put words in your mouth here, but, but one thing I was thinking as you're, you know, as another differentiator is the fact that you are, you are in essence, bringing um, distant assistance into my ecosystem as a business that are not just taking orders, so to speak, and doing tasks that are delegated to them. They are bringing expertise to the, to the job that can even make the processes better because of the training they've been through, because of the expectations you have, because of the document, you know, the process of documenting, you know, it's not like I'm just doing a brain dump of everything I know, and I'm just going to dump it off on you, then you go do it. You know, I'm, I'm giving you knowledge, but you're even helping me improve my own processes. Yeah. That's you know, why we call it process time. improvement program. Exactly. Yeah. It's it, it, it. And most people think of virtual assistants. Um, it could be humans, could be AI. Mm -hmm. machine learning could be all of that stuff 
Um, and as a matter of fact, if you Google it, oftentimes you'll see AI assistant or, you know, digital assistant or things like that. And it's transactional in nature is really what it is. Yep. Basically, what you would do is you would dump all this stuff and have somebody go do it. Right. You pay them. It gets done. It's transactional in nature. We don't want that. Yeah. We want an investment opportunity like intimate based relationship mm -hmm. or in, of course, you're going to do brain dumps in the beginning and teach sure. them. That you have to teach them the way that you expect things to get done. But what's nice now is we get to improve upon that process because once you delegate that, once you get that stuff out of your head, guess what happens? It opens up your creativity. Mm. We found the, the agency owners especially, but also a lot of business leaders, they're the visionaries. Yep. Not necessarily the CEO, the chief executive officer. Mm -hmm. Executive means right. execute, right? Yep. So a lot of people come to us and I have to remind them, I'm like, you're the creative person. You're thinking of all these things. How many tasks do you have? Or ideas that you have that you haven't finished. Oh my mm. gosh, I have this and this and this. Yep. Well, you think of bottleneck as the execution arm for your ideas. So that way things get done a lot faster and they get done up to your level of expectation because you've already approved the process. And I mean, I mean, we, we all know visionaries. I, I may be one of them that are terrible at process. You know, they are, they just, Absolutely. I mean, they're always floating in the clouds out there with ideas and then they need somebody that's say, you know, the, like <laughs> the analogy I've heard is that, you know, you may be the head, the, the floating head of the balloon, but there, you need a string that holds you in place <laughs> or you just exactly. float up into the stratosphere. But, um, <laughs> you, you, you are so relational, my friend, you, you, I know you interact within kind of the virtual assistant, like larger, you know, community and you probably interact with other other company owners that are some in this space. What's yeah. been the reaction of this new category, you know, within the virtual assistant yeah. industry as you're trying to create this new category? Yeah. So that is tough. I will tell you that the getting this word out, because words really do matter. Yeah. The best thing I can get from somebody when I say we have a distant assistant company is them saying, what is that? Mm -hmm. If I say virtual assistant, they automatically put us into yep. a box. Yeah. I've gone outside of this box with regards to the process improvement program, the integrated services, and I'm starting to see other companies offer similar things. Companies that started up as little as a year ago. Uh, I just ran into another company yesterday and they said, don't worry because when you hire your personal assistant, you'll also get audio and video editing and you'll get graphic design and you'll get you know uh, website management services but you'll never have to talk to them. You only have to talk to your assistant and they will delegate it to them. And I was like, that's our program. That's kind it's of what we created. You know? exactly and, right. and, and, and that, what I think is beautiful about that is, is that people are kind of, and, and I can't be so bold as to say that they heard it from us, but it, it just seems a little strange that you're hearing other people yeah. hear it. I, I mean, I didn't, I, it sounds like they could be a salesperson for us. And, um, Getting the words that matter, getting that into people's vernacular is a challenge in and of itself, but we're still in our infancy stage. We're still two years you know, old, and I'm starting to hear, I want to learn more about distant assistance. And that, you know, people will book on my calendar and they'll say, I want to learn more about you know, your distant assistants yep. and things like that. It's kind of cool to see you know, people writing that without me prompting them. Uh, Lord knows they probably seen the website or something like that, or they've heard it, but I think it's starting to kind of catch on and, mm. and, and do that deal. So that, that's pretty exciting. It's uh, they just want to hear you say it three times fast. They think it's a tongue twister, you know, <laughs> <They're> <laughs> like, can you say she sells seashells by the seashore? You know? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe you need to, instead of bottleneck, it needs to be a word that rhymes with like distant, you know, like yeah, distant maybe. assistant. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> And, well, and man, I purposely I, don't want to trademark that, by the way. I do not want to trademark this in assistant. I want people to take it and run with it. Yeah. It means something totally it's different. More, it's better as a as a broad, you know, category hashtag that is, you know, generating mm -hmm. conversation. And I mean, you know, we play in a big pond. We, uh, I mean, so people I think are so uh, resistant and so guarded, you know, that, oh, you're going to steal my idea. You're going to do this. I'm thinking, we, you know, 
world's got 7.2 billion people in it. You, you, you see that as your market, dude? You know, the, the whole idea of, you know, that this Nation is down. You know, it's not Nation big down. enough. It's not big <laughs> enough. That's right. But so it's, it is, uh, I am curious about your, your transition, even in your workforce, you know, with, within the people that work with you, when you went from bottleneck virtual assistance to this kind of distant assistant idea, and did you change your processes internally or were you already kind of doing it before and you just changed the name to kind of fit your model? We were already kind of doing it before, but this is a really good question. Thank you for asking it. And, and I think other people need to, to pay attention to this exact question because uh, I did make some mistakes earlier where I would announce something right away and it's like a truck running into a you know, a, a, a big cliff. And I've learned that when launching a new initiative, a new strategy, um, you kind of need to have a little bit of a hood ornament on the front of that truck, kind of put it mm. out there a little Good bit. Analogy. So when, when it does take off, it's more of a, a, a lesser incline. So mm -hmm. it's still an uphill battle. Don't get me wrong, because you're going to learn new things and things we haven't thought of and feedback yeah. from clients, that's all going to happen. But at least this way, the whole team is with you and they're not like, what the heck is going on? They're mm -hmm. not lost. And instead of having just one person charging that hill, you got a whole team of people charging that hill. They may go about it differently, but they they all have the same vision that they're trying to attain. And they're all behind you. They're yeah. all, you know, they're all with you. Um, and, and I shouldn't even say they're all behind you. We're, we're just together. And it's such a huge difference when you're able to kind of plan for this and 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 actually execute against that plan with everybody involved as opposed to doing it single-handed. Well, you you mentioned earlier uh, that you'd written a book about a year ago. And uh, so tell us, tell us about the book. Tell us how have you seen any like measured impact in your business as a result of of writing this book? Um so the book's called Quit Repeating Yourself, and um, I, I can't get credit for that title. <laughs> um, um, it was shared with me by uh, a, a, a marketing team, and I it really resonated with me because we see so many people who need to stop doing the wrong things and just focus on what they do best. Uh, they tend to, it, the mentality that, that I tend to see early on in agency owners especially, but also business leaders, is they have this mentality of, I just want to hire somebody. I don't have time to train them that need to know what they do. Mm. And then they hire them on. They say, you know what? Just let me do it. I can do it better and faster. And, and you go do this. That is the worst mentality to have because what we need to be able to do is slow down before we speed up. We need that planning period, that training period, so that People understand your tone and your voice, and that can't come from anybody right away. Yeah, that needs to. That's the relationship building, and that's where I say intimate based relationship, uh, as far as sharing exactly what you're thinking, asking for that feedback, promoting challenge. Meaning, if I say this is a great idea, let's do this, and someone speaks up, Jamie have you thought about what that's going to do here? And I'm like, Ooh, no, I didn't. Mm. Like, I love that. And anybody can come up with an idea in our organization and you will never see another person roll their eyes or anything like that. They won't do it. Now, if it's not relevant to that conversation, I may say, thank you for that. Please write that down and, and get back to me. Cause I really want to talk about that. But, but let's put that on the side for right now and, right. and focus right here. Right. That way they feel like, Oh my gosh, he, he, my voice has been heard. It may not be relevant now, but that's a great idea for this over here. Mm -hmm. Let's stay on track right now. Yeah. And when you get that kind of relationship going, um, it's, it's a, it's, it's amazing what happens. A lot of us have a hard time reprogramming our thought processes, our mindsets and, and how we work. This is our baby. You know, right. what happens that first day you sent your kid off to kindergarten, yep. you got on the bus and you're standing there seeing the bus go down the road. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? I wanted that, to go co-teach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying is, is 
people need to let go a little bit. They need to get out of their own way. They need to slow down because no matter what happens, the next 90 days, the next 180, 360, two years, five years, it'll be here, right? It's coming. Where do you want to be positioned in those times? Yeah. 60 days, yep. in, in 90 days. How, how would you like to be have all of those things that just drain you of energy delegated out and have someone else working on that that actually really loves doing that right stuff. and in a trusted way in a, you know in a trusted exactly. educated way yeah Absolutely. Uh, in a documented well well pro documented process but where do you see uh where do you see bottleneck in the next couple of years what's what's the uh What's the growth plan? What measure it against from 2019 to now? You know, project that out for a couple of years. What, what's it looking like? I'm getting closer to it. Um, I think bottleneck is in for some amazing growth uh, in the industry itself. It's just mm -hmm. it's just growing. Um, and that's the silver lining of COVID, uh, yep. the post pandemic. Uh, people now have kind of crossed that chasm. Uh, Jeffrey A. Green's book, Crossing the Chasm, you know, you, you there's a chasm where it, people kind of need some time to get familiar with it. They don't really right. trust it yet. They, oh my gosh, how can somebody be doing, you know, great work and they're not here in the office with me looking over their shoulder? And <clears throat> again, that's that whole letting, letting go thing. Um, and what we're seeing now is productivity levels are increasing, overhead is dropping, especially who knows with the uncertainty of the future of our economy right now. Um, 82% of all small business owners, according to an article in business.org, said that 82% of small, percent of small business owners are reducing costs. And the number one thing they're reducing is overhead. The number one highest mm. thing, overhead, employees. Staffing, yeah. Staffing, yeah. right? So th that's happening right now as of the time of this recording, August 18th. Um, that's happening. So the future is kind of going to be, you know, I see next year you ask what the future is going to be. I think we're going to grow through this pandemic or through this yeah. economical downturn, if you will, um, that I, I believe is coming. Uh, I don't think I'm alone in that. I'm definitely not a financial analyst or anything like that. It's just, I went through 2008. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing similar things happen. I will not say I'm recession proof, but I will say I'm recession ready. And I'd like to impart that wisdom on other leaders so that they can see what's happening and how you can still thrive and grow even through a downturn economy. Um, you now, might be in the right gig too. I mean, I think, I think we are for sure. I mean, it's like, yeah. it's like being with Walmart, you know, Walmart sometimes thrives when the, the, there's an economic downturn because, you know, it's, there are staples that people just have to have. I mean, people have to get work done. Business has to continue. You just don't have to have that employee sit in your office anymore. That employee could be, you know, working asynchronously anywhere on the planet, you know, and at half the cost, you know, that type of thing or, and, or less. And the, so and here, here's the yeah. beauty of it, too, because of the technology, our world has shrunk. Our town for sure. Increased. Friedman and, was right, yeah. wasn't he? He said it's flat. The world was flat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, you know, what's nice, too. And this is really, really neat. A lot of people that think of the Philippines think, oh, my gosh, the English is probably not good. And. Their internets are terrible. Well, there's fiber optic and yep. it's completed as of three years ago yep. in in a large section of Manila. There's 15 million people in that area. Right. Fiber optics totally in. Um, so reliability has gone way up with regards to connectivity. And so things like that are happening. So where we're at now, we're on the cutting edge of really, really um, leveraging um, the talent the worldwide talent. Yep. Uh, and, and and that's never really been, even though I've been doing this since 2006, it's never been better. Right. And it's really going to get better right. in the future. There is, there is no doubt, my friend, no doubt at all. It's uh man, it's exciting to catch up. I, uh, I told you it's going to be a little shorter, but uh, they're so, you know, kind of focused on, you know, just catching up with you and your, and the business progress you've made and the changes you've incorporated since last time we talked, but Wrap us up today with just one key lesson you've learned as a CEO that uh, you think would help people that are a little further behind you in the journey. What's what's one key nugget, you know, kind of industry agnostic that just says, man, these are this is something I've learned as a CEO that you've got to do to to help your your company or help your brand thrive. Uh, I would say one thing is is take a chance on 
um, hiring a vendor or somebody that can support you in the areas that you're weakest in. For my mm. case, it would be marketing. Um, now I've been challenged. I've hired a couple of different people and, and they failed and, or, or I failed. I've, I've taken the responsibility of that failure. It just didn't work out. And there was a significant amount of money that was spent that I wouldn't necessarily say is lost, but I invested in a pretty high-end education, if if you will. Mm -hmm. I feel like I got that Ivy League education yep. through the experiences, but I've learned so much from that. And I would encourage other um, CEOs that are ready to really, you know, take the bull by the horns and grow their company to, to kind of get out of their own way, um, ego aside, um, bring somebody in that they really feel and just, just go for it. Don't overanalyze it. Just go for it and get it going. And hopefully you make a good decision. If the decision doesn't work out to be true, understand that you've learned so much and that you won't make that decision again. It's all experience. And fail forward, you know, fail and failing yes. forward. I, it's, I mean, it's kind of the 80, 20 rule. It says, you know, you delegate, focus on those 20% of things that have the highest return you know, that you can do delegate the things that you either can delegate or you're not, not good at, you know, that you need assistance, you know, for, but man, it's so good to catch up with you. Thanks again for, for just taking time, Jamie. And we're excited to see what bottleneck distant assistance is going to be in the next few years and, and uh, how this category is going to, you know, this, this kind of um, early stage category is going to kind of take root and you're going to see it grow and, and become kind of commonplace in the vernacular in the whole VA space. But Jamie, thank you again for once again, my friend, playing your part in just helping all boats rise in a rising tide. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Kevin. Another episode in the books. We hope you heard some great takeaways. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review on iTunes and YouTube. As always, thanks for listening to Rising Tide.